Hello and welcome to another open source live code hangout. Today we are going to continue working on the Western Friend website and for the foreseeable future. This is the primary project I'm working on right now. We've been working to improve test coverage. As it stands, uh, our test coverage is about 87%. Uh, I'm testing out a couple of uh, tools to help me gain insight into that coverage. So far, I'm probably more impressed with this CodeCov tool because it helps me view the coverage in a way that I can get down to the individual line level and, and see which lines are uh, not tested or where I need to improve the code. Here's an example. And go down and say, oh, my accounts models or the managers need more. And it shows me, okay, there's two functions here. I need to write some tests for will not work in the accounts app today, but rather today we will continue our refactoring and test coverage pull request. So I have the branch open locally and I think we have an updated scan yesterday, but it's been edited three minutes ago. Okay. So it looks like a, this is an updated comment showing me my test coverage. It's supposed to exclude these tests up by, but okay. Nonetheless, they're coming up in the test coverage report, but it's saying I have hundred percent test coverage in my tests where I'm working mostly is in this conversion.py. And I have a pretty good test coverage here. All right, so we've got a generic one that just sees that it works, and that's the only one we've got. Uh, we'll raise a request exception. Eh, that's a good one to double check. Uh, exceptions are important parts of the code flow, so we want to make sure um, that we're expecting exceptions in certain cases. I don't want to spend a lot of time kind of fighting the tool. Uh, I really have worked to make this project very conventional. And by following conventions, that just means uh, things just kind of work typically, uh, even integrating third party tools. When you follow conventions, those tools are usually set up to adhere to those same conventions. So it's kind of an abstract thing. But it's a philosophical thing. Uh, here I'm breaking convention. Normally all the tests would go in tests pi and it's causing a bit of uh, noise, but otherwise it's not too bad. So I think in this case it's all right to break this convention. With this change, even though it's not as conventional, it's explicit. I'm telling myself what I'm doing. I'm testing the conversion pi, I'm testing the shared pi, so I, I can know right what to look at. And then potentially I'll have a test either lumping all of these into one file, test commands.py, or individually, depending on how the test coverage breaks down. Right now, uh, I don't have an insight into the coverage for these files, but I do have insight here. There's a lot of the logic in sharedpy and con um, conversion.py in any case. Most of these are like opening CSVs and looping. Once I get this refactoring pull request done and the test written, I'll be in a better position to continue this Molly Wingate blog importer. The reason I started this whole thing is I was trying to import these blog articles and having troubles making sure the content came over like images. I needed to be able to see it and inspect it in the debugger. Um, so there was a little bit of opaqueness there that I'm working through here to remove. Hopefully we'll be through these uh, soon so I can continue with the importer and then more broadly for the next foreseeable future, I'll be working on many more unit tests. This project is not in a state where we'll have a lot of probably new features at this point. We've written probably over 90% of the features that we're going to have in the minimum viable launch right now is about quality control and Unit test coverage is an important part of that. I don't want to play code golf. I'm not afraid of typing characters to help myself. 
I know that sometimes too much words can be a hindrance to understanding. So here's, actually it wrote two at, the, at once. Let's check these out. With none as input, so that shouldn't be allowed. It's gotta be a string. Mm, and it's gonna assert on a, raise it in type error. Where do we raise a type error here? I suppose the type error would come from the type checker, so even before. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's why we're type ignoring here. Mm, all right, we'll go for it. So that's good. I didn't ever think about that. You can test against your function signature by passing in an invalid value. Hmm. All right, test image block. So this one is going to try to get uh, their imports there. An actual image block. And my expectation... Import. Would be that the block... Would have properties, so this one it didn't quite get. That's fair. Um, what I can do, I have it open in context, and that my import was missing. That missing context can make it hard for Copilot to write the test. I'll just cut this real quick. And see if Copilot wants to try again. For example, do that. Yeah, so now that actually changed it. So the prompt uh, and context changed. I got a better result. The prompt didn't change, the context changed. Give Copilot as much information as you can, particularly have your imports already there. And as a, a second, Step have the tab have the other files open in another tab. I think it's going to use the whole buffer, but the imports are most important from what I can gather based on this case. These are automatically generated by Copilot based on a bit of prompting and making sure that I had my imports prior to it generating the tests. Okay, they failed. Oh boy, invalid URL none. Okay, actually that was a good one. This, I didn't think we could test. Mm, okay. Missing schema. Actually, that's an exception I need to uh, catch, uh, handle. Wow, all right. I don't have a heuristic here where I should uh, both log and then where the exception handling should terminate. Hmm. I was curious how Stack Overflow would be responding to large language models. Stack Overflow for Teams, which I think we should be using at a job. AI question assistant. Yeah, it makes sense. I've been using it certainly as a Stack Overflow alternative to get generative answers for my questions even. And they're helping people write better questions. Okay. Or follow the guidelines and stuff. All right. Responsibly. Okay. Community evaluation, LLM, Stack Overflow data. Data monetization, yeah, that's... We have a big theme. Enterprise. Japan did a big one where they recently decided that copyright doesn't apply to AI training data, even commercially, publicly available data, just art, anything, doesn't, photography, questions and answers, copyright doesn't apply, you can just use those data to train your large language models in Japan, import generic block. And that's the Argument to block factory, so generic block. 
equals see if we can do that invalid block type some content trailing comma for the win generic block equals uh wait yes trailing comma just so i get a nice little formatting there very cool this has been another open source live code hangout. Today we've been working on improving our test coverage and our content management scripts. We're at 85%. I just wrote a couple more tests and I think we're close to 90 now. We're using coverage pi locally to generate a report here and show me the exact lines of code. Previously I've been kind of waiting for the loop of continuous integration to run and getting the test from CodeCov, which is also very useful. But I like this local coverage pi. In this session, we've had some support and help from Copilot, but it's been a bit more of a struggle than previous sessions. It's just missing a lot and almost uh, feels like I would have been better off here just writing and understanding the code myself a bit more. One of the key takeaways was to make sure you've got all your imports in context prior to prompting Copilot. That makes a big difference. It'll generate much better code and connect the dots a lot. Thanks for stopping by the live stream. Hope you're doing well and have a great day.